by opening the meeting. This is uh, the Central Business Architecture meeting about the um, storage shed um, at the rear of 240 Main Street on map 31D-165. It was published September 30th and October 7th, 2014. Um, any other formalities I need to do? We'll hear from our presenter. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. I'm Dave Pomeranz, Director of Central Services, for those of you who don't know or haven't spoken with previously. Um, I'm here this evening looking for approval for the installation of a uh, small project, uh, a simple project, but a very important project. Um, we're looking to put up a prefabricated uh, wooden storage shed right behind Memorial Hall here. And I guess even though we've lost daylight since we're only 30 yards away from the project site, uh, it, it would be worthwhile to take a walk over and I can show you exactly what the location looks like. I'll leave it with you. Um, basically, um, the, the shed would be used to store um, engine and power tool equipment. So snow blowers, lawn mowers, um, small power tools, things of that nature that the Central Services maintenance crew uses for pretty much the maintenance of these three buildings here. So City Hall, Muni, and Memorial. Um, by moving them out of the basement of City Hall where they have been for a long time, we address a couple of really key issues. One is a safety issue uh, because we've got fuel driven machinery and equipment down in the basement. Uh, and Carolyn, you could probably testify that at times um, there is a gasoline and oil smell that wafts up through the building. Um, so oil and gas don't mix inside the building. So we'd like to get them out. Uh, the other thing, the reason I want to put them outside um, is that it's easier for the maintenance crews to access them uh, as opposed to bringing them up through the basement and out the handicapped door uh, and past the public bathrooms uh, in City Hall every time they want to use them. And the third feature uh, of putting them in the storage shed is that it frees up space in the basement, which is always at a premium for storage. Uh, we just did a successful shredding and recycling project, mostly for these three buildings, and it helped us clear out a lot of space in the basement, um, but we're always looking for additional storage space. Um, it's a prefab shed. I've submitted the plans for the building department. Louis Hasbrook is, is fine with, with the design, the construction. He's already signed off on all of that. And we're looking to get it installed as soon as we can. Uh, it would sit on a bed of stone. Uh, we've already dig safe the site we'd like to put it on. And we would use um, some of the parking maintenance equipment from the garage, put it in a stone base, and the uh, company that prefabs these units would bring it in and set it. Uh, in the spring, we would paint the siding, which is kind of an off-white cream color. Uh, we would paint it more of a color to match the brick uh, at the back of City Hall. Um, it has a darkish, tannish color for the roof shingles. Um, and we picked that, again, also to blend in with this sort of brick color. Um, no windows. It has one um, four foot, I think, four, 42 inch um, by six foot. Uh, heavy duty uh, door for storage. So we're not talking windows, we're not talking flower boxes. This is not the type of shed that you're going to put in your backyard by the pool. Uh, this is strictly for storage. It'll have a heavy duty lock for security. And um, again, it would be tucked sort of in line where Carolyn is um, behind the uh, back of Memorial Hall. And that's really it in a nutshell. Since um, there's no public here for comment, I open up the questions from the board. Sounds like this is already purchased. It's <laughs> ordered, yes, it's sitting at the yard. Uh, I wanted to get it on the production schedule before they got into fall, yes. I hate to be critical about such a little menial thing, but I'll tell you, it's the cheapest looking shed I've ever seen. <laughs> well, it's got, I mean, it's got T111 siding, yeah? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, the roof trim looks like a ranch house. You see these other ones, they got bigger faces. And I honestly think a, a little gable roof, I think if you wouldn't put a shed roof on it, just a flat shed roof, it would be, to me, would be less out of place. 
you know, there's no reference to gable roofs like in this whole area. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I think a, a simple shed roof, square box shed, would have, to me, would have been less apparent. But well, one of the reasons. I mean, it's not forever. Right. You agree to right. that, right? Is one of the reasons we went with the gable is that we're going to build a loft above the top of the wall line so we can get additional equipment stored in there. So with the shed roof, we would have lost some of that additional cubic footage. Did, did I read somewhere that this is not a, that this is a temporary expedient or was this a permanent um, thing for you to store your equipment in? No, this would be permanent. Children. I think what I, I said was it's not it, it's not on a permanent foundation, oh, okay. but it's in my staff memo. Um, so I, I misinterpreted what you said. Other comments? Uh, it's just too bad when they were redesigning Pulaski Park, anything like that, they think. I mean, this isn't functioning at all for Pulaski Park, right? None of the maintenance stuff. No, this stuff is strictly, strictly for central services right. for maintenance operations. Yeah. Too big it was more forethought to be able to, if it is forever, it's a <coughs> that is a little nicer, you know, like a little more of a, perhaps a, even a permanent building brick or something. Mm -hmm. But in the short run, I, I, pre I know your needs, so. Something that would be great if it could be replaced someday or figured out how to be dealt with better. But, you know. I mean, there isn't any areas like down below here where a shade could be put that would be not as much. We've got in your face, just, though. Just below here, we've got the generator behind the MIS department. Um, the roundhouse has a, a walkway with a gate system over behind at the edge of the municipal building. You run into the fire escape and the hillside on this side. Uh, we've got all the uh, dumpsters behind here, and then you're into the parking lot. Um, and the majority of the equipment is going to be used up on this oh, side yeah, for the three buildings. Yeah, is there a reason why it's freestanding instead of just a, like on the back of one of the buildings? That the closest I could get it to the back of the building, Joel, would be behind Memorial. And right now, I've got, if you're standing looking at the back of Memorial, I've got. Uh, two spaces for church parking right behind the building, a bulkhead, an emergency egress door, and then I've got a fenced-in area with all the, uh, some of the heating and cooling equipment for the building. So I really can't put it up against that fence. That's as close as I can get to the building, but I really can't put it up against that fence because if we ever have to repair or replace any of that equipment, and there's a large condenser unit behind there, we have to take the whole fence down. So the shed would be in the way. Yeah, just looking at the um, site plan and placement, I know that uh, for uh, the revitalization of Velasky Park, one of the things that they were particularly interested in doing is improving the um, uh, linkage behind Memorial Hall in front of you know this building, uh, you know going on down to the street level here, and your shed would be right on that viewing um, as people would walk along that, uh, that promenade. Uh, therefore, I, I'm concerned not so much about the necessity for the little building, not so much about the form of it. There's not a whole heck of a lot that you can do, uh, but uh, color to me is very important. Um, and when I look at you know, this, you know, that's, mm -hmm. you've assured me that it will be painted um, in a more subdued color to match the brick. Correct. So therefore, it will blend in um, and not stick out like a sore thumb. Uh, also, I assume that you'll have to have some sort of a ramp entrance coming into it for wheeled equipment, and so there'll probably be a little bit more foundation work than just not, not a plan to put a ramp on. I mean, the, the sleepers are four inches off the ground, so four inches off the stone, mm -hmm. um, and basically, you know, we're talking some snow blowers which you bend down and lift up, and you're right in and some uh, Toro lawnmowers. Okay, yeah. So anyway, I think the, the, my biggest concern was, um, uh, you know, the, the color on the thing. And as long as it's relatively subdued, I, I don't have much of a problem with it. The biggest problem I have is that this thing was ordered before coming before this committee. And if we had said, no, you, you can't do this, uh, then I don't know what kind of turmoil that would have caused, but it would seem to me that 
out of respect for the process and the fact that we do have this review committee uh, to go ahead and order this thing um, in anticipation. <coughs> um, you know, it just doesn't sound to me like the best way to play the game, but that's not what we're here for. Um, I want to echo some of what Bruce said and that um, I think my concern is that this is going to become a pedestrian way. It is a pedestrian way already and mm -hmm. so people will be walking by this building and um, and it is, you know, it, it is the cheapest shed you could probably get. So it's encouraging to know that it's going to be painted another color. I'm wondering if there are other ways that you can soften it through landscaping or um, are there any plans for that? What is the landscaping that's currently around there? Uh, you've got, before the, uh, the slope heads down, uh, there are a series of um, uh, perennials that are part, uh, back there. And Carol and I talked about doing some landscaping around the corners, uh, which just sort of grow around the door uh, after it was installed. Mm -hmm. And we're fine with doing that. So will the shed, like right now, it looks like it's maybe two feet off of the pedestrian way. How far off of the pedestrian way will it be? It's, it's 10 feet wide by 12 foot deep, and we're going to push it as far to the back as we can. So you're probably, I think, about three plus three and a half feet. So you could have a planting bed between the pedestrian way and the sure. shed. I think that would go a long way and just sort of minimizing it. Um, and I think, like I said, the red color would be good. Um, uh, this is a, a, not something that we uh, really can discuss, but I'm surprised that Louie would allow for, I'm assuming it's a plywood floor. Uh, pressure treated plywood floor, three quarter inch thick, yes. And to have gasoline equipment in the shed? I thought you had to have a concrete floor for that. Well, you've got ventilation and um, if he's going to require anything additional, we can certainly handle that. Yeah, he, he said, yeah, and it's a storage shed. Okay. Um, any further comments? I have a question for clarification. What type of um, plantings would you think would be appropriate in that strip between the sidewalk and the shed? Where's our landscape architect? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even it doesn't necessarily have to be specific, but I'm talking about height. You know, is it um, evergreen, deciduous? Do you care? Is it annuals? Is it perennials? I would, I would think if it was some kind of evergreen hedge that that would grow up and more or less high. Right thing. As well as Do you know? Is all that year round? Yeah. yeah. Is part of the class and this drawing is obviously from the Pulaski Park plan. Right. Is there any planned landscaping along this pedestrian way? And could that? No, it doesn't come this far over. I think it's really the park boundary is really mm -hmm. on the other side of the building. Okay. I mean, not to say that they wouldn't plan all the sort of the gateway um, points. Um, I haven't been intimately involved with the design process, mm -hmm. so I don't know. Um, but. Um, I don't think this is one of the main access points to the park. So if I were to guess, I would think they'd be looking at other access ways as opposed to this sort of back door. Okay. Um, I agree that something evergreen and, you know, bushy would be nice so that it, it's there for at least three seasons. Not so important in the winter because it'll probably just be snow. <laughs> um, is, is it within our purview to require either to um, put conditions about plantings or color on? Oh, I, I think absolutely. Um, you know, color typically isn't, but I think given that the historic buildings here and that I think it makes a difference in how stark something is represented and given that there's no architectural aspects that speak to, for the shed that speak to anything around it, I think color is sort of the substitute. <laughs> Um, so I think in this context, it makes sense because you're trying to make it disappear as opposed to match, matching something. Can we ask for a landscaping plan? Yeah, do you want to, um, well, what you could do is put a condition that 
and you know, we've done this before where the chair and staff review to make sure it meets the intent of the committee mm -hmm. before it's planted. So, but it, I think the, I think if you all could settle on sort of heights that you anticipate that you'd want to see, you know, is it a three foot, is it a six foot, or, you know, upon maturity, is it three or six feet, I guess I should say, um, and evergreen, that at least gives guidance, and then we can review the final plan. But I think you need a little bit of specificity about those characteristics. Well, I guess I, I would say if you could get planting material that comes in at roughly three feet high and grows to a maximum of five to six feet, at that, I mean, we don't want to completely hide. I imagine this is eight feet high, maybe? Uh, the walls are seven feet and the roof peak is about eight foot five or so. Mm -hmm. So it's short. Yeah. So up to a maximum of six feet high. And I think it should be a mix of, of plantings, evergreen and, and perhaps perennials. And if there's any integration that could happen between what's being done at Pulaski Park, you know, whether it's plant material or otherwise, it'd be a nice way to tie it in. Well, this is going to be long finished, including the plantings before Pulaski Park. Right. But if, if, if they have some, they must have a plant list. No? I don't, I don't think I don't they're think that far along that with okay. the template. Just conceptual okay. stages and a lot of review and fundraising and everything. So. Well, the evergreens are going to be the most sort of durable and versatile. Right. They'll be green all year. Um, Lower maintenance. Yeah, I was going to say low maintenance. Whatever. I don't, I don't right. think and both central services and the DPW snow blow all these walks around the existing park and through the back here. So you're going to want something that's going to be able to take a beating Terrible, yes. from the snowblowers. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we'll have to keep the front shoveled out for access for our equipment. But I would think, you know, sort of a, you know, an evergreen like this, you know, three foot tall but durable. Mm -hmm. We could plant several of those, sure. Okay, that sounds good. Does anybody want to craft a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve the. Um, plan is submitted <clears throat> with the following um, conditions that the um, uh, that it be painted a color to match the bricks of uh, Memorial Hall as closely as possible and that um, some kind of evergreen hedge um, that starts out at least three feet high is planted between the um, structure and the sidewalk or the path. Or I know this is probably not common time, but can you, um, do you want to put a date, like May or June of next year, since it's going to go in, you know, before? Well, evergreens can be planted in the fall, I think. Can't they? Yes. Yeah. When, when is this going in? Next week? <laughs> <laughs> before it snows. <laughs> like I guess I'd like to leave it, you know, if we can still find stock at the nurseries as we get into next month. Uh -huh. uh, then we will plant some. If not, okay. plant them first thing in the spring when we do plantings back at City Hall, we'll include this. Okay. That sounds fair enough. Yeah. Sure. So, so, provided by the spring of 2000. Okay. Do you have a motion? I just made one. I mean, do we have a... a Thank you.